Before we jump into today's episode, there are a couple of announcements from the Stirling University Law Society. Firstly, our AGM will be taking place on the 24th of March at 6pm. The form to put your name forward for position is now live and will be linked in the description of this episode. We have a wide variety of positions up for grabs and we would love to see some new faces running for positions. The form contains a description of each position so if you're unsure of what role may suit you best then have a look through the outlines on there and get involved. Secondly, the Stirling Student Union opened nominations for the Clubs and Societies Awards 2021 recently and we would be very grateful if our members could nominate the Stirling University Law Society and our committee for as many awards as you see fit. There are a wide variety of awards up for grabs, so we would love to see the society up there at the top of the pile to recognise the amazing efforts and achievements of everyone who has played a part in the exceptional growth of the society this academic year. Again, the link to nominate will be in the description below, so have a look at the different awards available and see if you think we would be worthy of such a prize. Anyway, that's enough announcements for one day, let's get into today's podcast. Hello and welcome to the Law Podcast brought to you by the University of Stirling Law Society. I am your host, Jed France. Today I am joined by the Society's Marketing Officer, Holly Conway, to discuss our experiences with imposter syndrome and offer some advice to those who may also be experiencing such feelings. So hello everyone, welcome back to the podcast, I hope we're all doing well. I hope we're enjoying our fun university activities. Hope everyone's doing well on their coursework. Hope everyone's doing well preparing for exams. I know we're getting down to the nitty gritty stage of the academic calendar. So I hope we're all coping well and also making sure that we're, you know, having a combination of studying, but also taking some time for ourselves to relax as well. And on that sort of theme, I'm delighted to be joined by our marketing officer, Holly Conway, today. Holly, how are you? How are you keeping? Hello, I'm good, thank you. Um, I've had quite a relaxed morning, so that's been nice. How are you today? I'm good as well. I can't say I've had a, a relaxed morning <laughs> like yourself. I've, I've I've been at work since like oh. half five this half five this morning, so it's been a, it's been a bit intense. Okay. But like I say, it's it's an absolute pleasure to have you back on. Obviously, we've had John before for the semester recap that we had towards the end of last year, yeah. and I was I was really happy because at, at the end of last year, I did put out to the committee and said like, if anyone wants to come on and, and speak. About about a certain topic then let me know because I'm, I'm always more than happy to have different committee members on or different members on to come and talk about particular issues and that's when you approached me and said that you'd like to do a podcast on imposter syndrome which is something that I've heard about briefly but never really knew what it was apart from the kind of does what it says on the tin in the title. So just to start off Holly would you mind just giving us kind of a brief introduction as to what imposter syndrome is or your understanding of it at least? Yeah um, so I didn't actually know what it was either and I think it was some kind of self-help article or some kind of thing like that that I read and I've seen the phrase in it and I think it can be a bit misleading because when you hear the word syndrome you think it's some kind of like disorder or illness yeah. but it's actually it's basically like a like a kind of pattern of behavior i would kind of maybe describe as where it's like people doubt their success and their accomplishments even though they're doing really well and like they're quite intellectual and they have a lot of things going for them but in their head they kind of have an internalized fear that they're going to get found out or that they're like a fraud and they shouldn't be whether that's yeah. at university studying law or whether they're in a profession and they're working in a firm like they feel like they shouldn't be there they don't belong there they don't have the credentials to be there yeah i've definitely like that's i know we had a conversation before we started recording holly and we both kind of said that you know we've we've felt i don't want to say symptoms because that makes it seem really like official you know like, mm-hmm. like a medical mm-hmm. term but we've, we've both felt like what it feels like to kind of fall into that mindset of you know questioning your accomplishments and wondering whether you're good enough or whether you're successful enough or whether it's all due to luck or there's a wide variety of, of ways that you feel that are related to imposter syndrome and like i said before i didn't know there was an actual label for it i just thought maybe i was like lacking self-confidence or something Mm -hmm. and it's something that's easy to fall into and i don't think it's something that really gets better as you go on because i mean from when before i started studying law i was questioning whether i was good enough to study law and then when i got into studying law and i was doing well at it 
I was questioning whether I really was good at it, whether I was lucky. And the more you go on, the more you just start to question everything else that happens. And even right now, when I've got, you know, I've got a podcast, I'm on committee, I still mm -hmm. question whether that's like because of my own hard work or accomplishments or whether I just was lucky to find my way into that role and just knew the right people. So for, for you, Holly, what, how do you approach it and what has been your experience with imposter syndrome? I think there's two, for me, when I think of the feelings that they kind of describe when they're talking about imposter syndrome, you know, like anxiety, stress, like feeling like you maybe don't fit in. There's two for me in it. It's strange because they are both good things, but they can also cause those kind of feelings for me. So the first one is joining committee, which as much as obviously that has been an amazing experience and I've really enjoyed it. Like you're obviously surrounded by people who are really good at what they do and they have lots yep. of other like extracurricular things that they do and you might look at them and think oh they're so much better at this than me or they're so much better at that than me and you kind of think oh like should I be here because they all seem like they know what they're doing so much more and the yeah. second one I would say is social media in particular LinkedIn which again like LinkedIn is a great platform obviously for making connections with people and you know finding people that work in an industry that you would like to work in you know you can contact them and whatever but like you might be feeling fine and then I go into LinkedIn and I'm scrolling through my timeline and all I'm seeing is like people getting accepted for training contracts and people getting summer vacation schemes and people yeah. finding their dream job and I'm like oh my gosh like these people seem like they have everything together so much better than me like I don't really have a plan just now of what it is that I want to do so sometimes when I see that I'm like oh like am I really in the right the right place, like the right position? Yeah, I, I definitely agree with that. And I know it was something that we mentioned in discussion at the, the bingo social that we had on <laughs> yeah. Wednesday night just gone. And we, I mean, I kind of joked about it and said, you know, there's nothing better than when you open your LinkedIn and right at the top there's someone <laughs> announcing they've got a, a training contract or they've got a, a vacation scheme placement or, or something like that. And yeah. like you say, it's, LinkedIn is a great tool, but it's also a blessing and a curse, just like every other social media platform. The only difference is LinkedIn is for more like academic and professional sides of life whereas instagram is more your personal life but they, they all they, they, they suffer from the same bad sides in terms that everyone's just posting the good sides of what's going on mm -hmm. and you know like instagram is like people posting their, their best holidays or th their best times in their relationship or whatever it may be and somewhere with linkedin it's just more of a professional standpoint where they're yeah. posting when they've got a, a training contract or a vacation scheme or like for me i'll never post on linkedin when i've got a new guest on the podcast or i've hosted an event or something and as something that i'm becoming more self-aware of and I, I don't want to come across as someone who's fallen into that trap of just always posting posting the good times and sometimes you do scroll through your LinkedIn and see people saying finally after a hundred rejection letters and loads of failed vacation scheme applications or whatever it may be they finally get something and it's nice to see that people are obviously celebrating their success because they deserve it they put the hard work in but they're also saying this wasn't my first time applying this has been a long process and don't get disheartened at the first rejection um so that's what i like to see on linkedin but mm -hmm. it is easy to kind of fall into that that trap of scrolling through and being like oh my god there's so many of these people i have on here who are you know getting these lucrative contracts and, and moving forward in their career and like you say hall if you're someone who doesn't really know what they want to do in their career it can be very daunting and you know i just think it's something that people need to to bear in mind so if anyone's listening and they do kind of fall into that trap you know just don't put too much pressure on yourself and just i think this would be a good time holly for you to kind of highlight the statistics that you found in your research the other night yeah um so when i was looking obviously i knew i was going to be coming on here i kind of had a little look about imposter syndrome specifically in the legal industry and basically what they were saying was they kind of did a study across the UK and 74% of lawyers have experienced imposter syndrome at some point in their careers. And when you look at just trainee lawyers, that statistic goes up to 83%. And like they were kind of saying that even in the, like the article when they spoke to senior lawyers who were like obviously at the top, you know, partners even, they still experience that imposter syndrome. So it kind of shows yeah. you that it doesn't matter what point you're at in your career, like you're still always going to experience that kind of feeling at some point. Yeah, and that's it's a really scary statistic. It's mm -hmm. kind of like a double-edged sword because, you know, you've it's daunting to think that it's so common, but 
at the same time, it does kind of make you feel better to know that you're not alone. You're not the only person that's experiencing mm-hmm. it. And and it's especially in the legal industry, because obviously it's so formal, so professional. Yeah. Right? The whole application processes are so rigid. Everything is the same way. Whereas, you know, if you go into different avenues, whether it be like recruitment or advertising or whatever it may be, loads of different fields, each employer might recruit in a different way, but for law firms, they all recruit r- mm-hmm. roughly the, the same way and they recruit so far in advance and everyone's kind of going through the same stuff. So mm-hmm. it, it, that's I think that's probably why it's so high in the legal yeah. industry. I was just like, when they were obviously speaking about the, the statistics were really high, they basically kind of gave two reasons, one of which being, and I mean, I can definitely see this because a lot of people that I know have these traits, but that imposter syndrome is common in overachievers and perfectionists and the legal industry is kind of filled with people who are overachievers and are perfectionists and they were also saying that basically like the profession itself and like you were saying with them like the application process and stuff like it's such a big emphasis on like really extremely high expectations and like they're not tolerant of mistakes if someone makes a mistake then that's kind of like a really huge deal when obviously in reality we're all humans and we're all going to make mistakes at some point but the kind of expectation of perfection and not making mistakes is something that's kind of perpetuated yeah and it's a really kind of toxic thing to fall into because i think being a perfectionist is it it depends how you look at it but for me i I don't tend to want to be a perfectionist Mm -hmm. i don't strive for perfection i just really want to just do the best that i can and kind of just see where the results end up going. I don't. I think if you're being a perfectionist, there's some sort of fear in you that you're scared to put your work out there until you wholly feel that it's absolutely 100% finished, done, ticked mm-hmm. every box. And that's a really kind of negative mindset to fall into because nine times out of 10, you're never gonna get a piece of work that you're gonna put out there and say, there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. It's the yeah. most perfect piece of work ever. And it's just really, like I say, a toxic mindset to fall into. So if, if people can just maybe try and have a bit more confidence, belief, believe in yourself just a little bit more. I know it's a lot easier said than done, mm-hmm. but just try and build up over time your self-confidence, the belief in yourself. Don't compare yourself too much to others. Don't strive for perfection all the time. And I'm sure you will start to see results. And Holly, I know that you've been a speaker at our previous <laughs> mental health conferences and it's quite ironic because I know with the whole imposter syndrome sort of thing, you might not feel like your advice is valid or that anyone wants to hear it. But for me, I've took a lot from your speeches and your advice. And I do just want to ask you, in your own kind of encounters with imposter syndrome, how do you find that you deal with it? And do you have any advice for anyone who may be struggling similarly? I think one of the most important things, I think obviously with the statistics that we have, well, that I've kind of spoke about is that to know that it's common that you're not the only person that's feeling that way. I mean, obviously imposter syndrome's linked quite a lot to feelings of stress and anxiety. And quite often when you feel that way, you kind of feel like you're the only person that's going through it and you're you're definitely not. I think like giving yourself credit as well, where it's due, like recognizing when you've done something well, rather than like, I'm the kind of person sometimes that if I do a good piece of work and I get whatever the uh, marks back, like it'll be a good mark, but I'll kind of be focused on the negative aspect of it rather than- yeah like what I've done well so I think focusing on like your strengths and what you do well and I kind of seen when I was looking at it which I think is something that's quite a good idea is every so often not like every day you don't have to do this but like just thinking about what your strengths are and what your accomplishments are I mean obviously that's what you would be doing if you're writing a CV or a covering letter but I remember when we had a talk in second year of uni and Tikus, Tikus Little basically said to us that it's something that they when they're looking at people's CVs and things when people come to them for advice they're really they find talking about their strengths and their accomplishments really mm. hard like just taking some time every so often to think about what you're good at and what you're what you've accomplished because if you're constantly comparing yourself to other people you might only be focusing on what the negative aspects of your own kind of personality are whereas obviously there's things that you're good at that a lot of other like your peers and your colleagues won't be so good at like for me personally I sometimes feel like I'm maybe not as legally connected I don't have as many contacts etc as some other people in the committee but I also feel like I'm probably one of the most creative people there 
like I enjoy like doing things artistically and you know obviously as part of the marketing officer role I design things for the Facebook and Instagram and um, like I like making things and I like baking so there's like other parts to me that other people don't have and I think it's important to remember that when you're comparing yourself to someone that like they'll look at you and see aspects of your personality that they would like to have and vice versa so there's always going to be parts of other people I don't know if that makes sense yeah. but there's always going to be parts of other people's personality that you would like to have and that they would like to have from you mm-hmm. yeah it's definitely a two-way street you know it's not as if you're the only mm-hmm. one that's looking at other people thinking oh I would love to be that kind of person they're definitely looking at you as well saying that there's aspects of your character or your personality or the way that you do things that they're envious of and I think mm-hmm. that uh, to some degree it, it can be healthy because you can look at someone and kind of take inspiration and say okay that's something I would like to work mm-hmm. on rather than just trying to look at it in a toxic way and being really kind of like a jealous sort of way and you just start to put yourself down there's really mm-hmm. kind of two ways you can go about it and just as, as Holly was was mentioning there about the how she's creative and artistic and I, I know I've put an announcement at the start of this podcast about the the union awards being open for the clubs and societies and we've we've made it very aware or very apparent in the in the committee chat on Facebook that if Holly does not get recognised <laughs> for the efforts that ever she's put into our social media this year, then the whole thing is it, we're writing off. We're, we don't care anymore because our social media this year, for anyone who's seen it, has been top notch. Every post has been great. The graphics that Holly's come up with have been absolutely sensational so if i can ask you to nominate one person just one person for one <laughs> for one award and the the union awards please make it for holly for the graphics that she's done i think it's um oh. what, what's what's the award called holly you know it's like best is it best publicity uh, best publicity yeah. yeah i mean i think it's like for that kind of what i do is sometimes it's hard because I'm not necessarily the person who's organising things, so I'm not actively getting recognition in that sense. So yeah. yes, it would be nice. We're, it would be nice. We need to, to, we to start putting like a watermark on it, <laughs> credit to Holly Conway. <laughs> so yeah, I know that's a bit of a, a bit of a kind of a tangent that went off on there, but I just want to make sure that everyone mm. who's listening, who knows our social media pages, I'm sure you've all seen the the top level that they're at. So I would just like to see Holly get recognised for that. And that's coming from the committee as a whole. That's not just coming from me. We're, we're very proud of Holly and the work that she's done. And and just on that aspect that you're saying, Holly, I do think it is important to, to recognise that, you know, you need to focus on your strengths and don't put too much emphasis on your weaknesses because this all comes back to, like we've mentioned before, being a perfectionist. You're not going to be the, the complete 100% all-rounded individual who is absolutely amazing at everything. And that's something that I've kind of come to terms with when being on committee because like you said we're surrounded by so many different people who are so gifted and and talented in in different ways and you know for me you know if I need a graphic made for an event that I'm doing it's not wise for me to try and do it myself I'm I'm better to, to acknowledge that that's not my strong point let's go to Holly who is good at that and it's just you know just kind of letting go of that maybe a bit of your ego potentially to to say okay this isn't the role for me this isn't what i should be doing i'm not suited for mm-hmm. this kind of action so i'm gonna go and ask yeah. someone around me who can do it and then li- equally holly might come to me and ask for something else whatever it may be so it really mm-hmm. is a two-way street and like holly was saying just focus on your strengths and don't put too much emphasis on your weaknesses because like I said, you're not going to be the complete all-round individual. It's just not possible unless you're superhuman and it's very unlikely <laughs> that that is going to happen. But I think yeah. we're roughly at the 15-minute at the mark now. I think we've probably covered all of the kind of areas that we, we wanted to, Holly. I think we've kind of shone the light on the, the topic. And like we said before, it was something that we had felt but didn't really know there was a kind of label for it. So just to mm-hmm. en- encourage good practice, and it's something that you mentioned as well, I like to kind of take a step back and, and think of things that I've accomplished recently that I'm proud of. So Holly, what is your most recent accomplishment that you have took pride in? Well, literally on what day is it today friday so on wednesday i completed the couch to 5k program which is basically like nine weeks yeah it's nine weeks of basically going from not running at all to like running really well and i know that obviously it's not necessarily something that's related to the legal profession or anything like that but personally for me when i sometimes look to other people it was always something that I felt wasn't my strength in terms of fitness and not being able to run at all, really. So the fact that I've gone from 
not been able to run for more than like a minute at a time to now doing 30 minutes of running and doing five kilometers in that time it's something that i'm very proud of yeah that's a massive achievement holly that's not something that people should should take lightly or or yourself because you know we've been following it on strava because obviously we have the fundraiser that are going on right now so i've personally seen you going from week one to like week is it week nine or something now you're on or yeah something like mm -hmm. that yeah just literally wednesday yeah yeah week nine. And, I, and i see your captions and stuff and, and you can see, I, I can see myself that you're taking pride in how your fitness is getting better and mm -hmm. right now during the whole covid times it's something that easily gets neglected because people are kind of stuck indoors so the fact that you're going out and you're taking the initiative to go and get fit and it's not i don't know for you holly but for me when i do running or, or even just walking i don't really do it for the, the kind of like physical aspect i do it more for the mental aspect because i want to achieve something improve something to myself so mm -hmm. yeah again massive congratulations holly that's something that i'm delighted to hear about and jed what about you um, for what, me what, 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 your most recent what achievement? Proud of? um <laughs> i think for me it's probably the fact that i think it was roughly about a month ago the, the podcast is now covered and been listened to in every continent apart from antarctica because you're never gonna get listened to there <laughs> so across all six continents africa the lot we've had at least one listener which was pretty special for me it's not something yeah. that i really thought we would we would hit um so early on i mean this is the 10th episode so i think we only took like eight or nine episodes to to reach the six continents mm -hmm. so that was pretty special for yeah. me and I, I did kind of take a step back and think wow that's um that's pretty special so i'd say yeah. that was probably my, my most recent achievement that i'm really really proud of but i do just try and take like once a week to sit back and say okay little things that i've done even if it's just doing the ironing or something like okay i was put i was putting that off you know what i mean like let's mm -hmm. do the ironing get it done and that's mm -hmm. an achievement you can take off so it's really yeah. just kind of breaking things down to small things that you can take pride in because it's something i've mentioned before your degree or your job or whatever maybe does not define you as a person you know you've got so many other things going on so don't just get sucked yeah. into that mentality but that's a whole another conversation <laughs> i'm not i'm not going to go down that rabbit hole so I think that's a good place to leave it, Holly. Thank you so much for coming back on. It's been great to chat. And fingers crossed, we'll soon be announcing that you have won the best publicity <laughs> award. <laughs> Thank you for having me, Jed. It's been, it's been great. Thank you very much for listening to another episode of our podcast. If you like what you hear, please follow us on your podcast platform of choice to ensure that you never miss an upload. To keep up to date with us, you can follow our Instagram page, which is Star Law Society. Additionally, our Twitter is at underscore Star Law Society. In the meantime, it's goodbye from me and I'll speak to you again very soon.